I'm going to send you a document real quick while we're waiting for everybody else to get in. All right. And there is that file. Save and I, I should make a folder for this class. What did you say? I said I should make a folder for this class. Yes, you should. Because there's going to be a lot of documentation, a lot of stuff that comes. A lot of handouts. All right, I got and it. the stuff that uh, the stuff that you get, you're going to use forever. Okay. Struggling, um, just a little oh, bit. Oh, your there. environment variables. What's going on with that? Yeah. Um, so I was on that for about, I don't know, six hours, going through YouTube videos and looking up for help and everything. And then I was like, okay, let me take a break. I took a break and then ate some stuff, got up. And I was like, wait a second, this isn't my only computer. I opened up that VMware, pulled up Linux, yeah. and I did hit another um, roadblock that I'm trying to figure out, but I have gotten further. <laughs> nice. You you got further on the Linux box. Yeah. Yeah, Linux get the butt out of um, uh, out of Microsoft all day every day. <laughs> all day every day. All right, who else just joined? Queen and Reggie? Yes, I'm here. Reg, you get in? I heard about that elite mojo. There's Reggie. <laughs> oh, we didn't get you in the room. Can you get the Monty added to the elite mojo room? Hey, Brother Peter. How you doing, brother? I'm okay. I'm going to, uh, Queen, I don't know if you have this. Oh, you should have it, I think. Um, but what I'll do is, can I not transfer files um, while sharing? Oh, and I'm trying to transfer to me, because I'm on the mm -hmm. phone. I'm just listening. Oh, uh, yeah, it is. Oh, you're only on the phone? Yes. Um, so, Reggie, yes, if you would, uh, there's a file that I'm sending right now. Oh, actually, is that loading or sending? That's loading in the chat window. Oh, it is. That's loading in there. I didn't mean to do that. My man. Peter Brown, what's up? How you doing, brother? All good. All's well. Yeah, Hi, man. Kevin. Hey, hey, Queen. How are you? <laughs> I'm well. How are you? So nice to hear your voice. We ain't been together in so long, man. It's, you know, we might have to kick everybody else out. Look. <laughs> I didn't actually mean to load this file the way that it's loading. It's actually loading into the room and sharing. The only thing I meant to do is send it to y'all. I actually never thought Windows do that, uh, WebEx do that. Um, but so let me give, get this file shared. My guess is others are going to come in and I'll have to share it again. But whoever is in the room can get this now. It is 
um, a basic photovoltaics PDF. Okay, as we go through, um, there are going to be other small documents and other handouts that I give you that are pertaining to um, the module that we're on. Again, uh, I spoke with Reggie, um, some of these things are going to be things that you're going to keep forever, like sizing charts, right? How much wattage is required for X type of thing. You're always, I mean, look, if you don't bookmark it and keep it, you're going to be looking it up again. I mean, you know, so it just makes sense to consolidate these things, create a, a solar folder on your computer and save everything. Yeah, I didn't want to load that, but. Okay, so there's, um, Reggie, did you see that file I threw in the room? I see a file transfer. Okay. Yep, that's what it is. Can I open it up? Uh, yep. Uh, you're not going to necessarily need to refer to that now. Um, more than anything, we're just going to go through. Uh, actually, you can. You can open that up and, and go through it. We're, we're speaking really about the, um, more than anything, the batteries. Uh, is where we start this evening. With that? So, uh, give me one second. Crack open this book. All right. Um, what time is it? Eight oh six. I'm here in the room. Thomas said he wasn't going to make it this evening. He was working. All right. So. Why do we I start need with... To do, Peter, I'm sorry. We probably need to do, find out like a roll call because it says three people that called in, but we don't know who those three people are. Those are the three people that you see in the room. No, but... That's Reggie. But that's, um, that's, that is... Wait a minute. Maybe not. Who is All on the right. phone? Those are three separate users, can you, I believe. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, this is Marcel Williams. I'm on the phone. I'm, I'm, okay, I'm you're on the phone. Of, yeah. And who else is on the phone? And this is Orimi Jafumi on the phone as well. Good evening. Greetings, Queen. Thank you. Will you all not be joining the WebEx? The computer component, so you can see? Um, not this evening, not for this week, actually. Next week I'll be able to do that, but unfortunately not for this week. I have to be on the phone. Okay, that's all right. We're recording it. Um, okay. And so all of the slides and everything that we show on screen, you will be able to see uh, when you can. Okay, that's wonderful. All right. And Brother Mark, Mark, um, yeah. not Marcel. Uh Yes, I, I have a um, computer and I'm trying to get online so I can join join the WebEx. It's giving me some trouble at the moment, but I'm trying to I'm trying to work it out. And it looks like maybe there's someone else. Is there other people on the phone only? There's one more. Looks like. Who else do we have just on the phone? I think there's someone else. There's someone else. So, uh, so when I built this course, right, I built it with a couple of specific things in mind, um, and that is really, I, I mean, one of the most one of the most important factors that you want to consider when you're doing any photovoltaic install is the cost. <laughs> the very first and foremost thing that you need to consider, the cost of this install. That's a, that's a game changer, right? If you can't afford it, that broke the deal. 
you're not going to be able to do it. If you, if the person that you're looking to consult for, or your budget can't sustain what the cost is, that's the end of that game, right? So it makes sense to me that we begin with the batteries. The batteries are going to be your most expensive element on your photovoltaic system. <coughs> Why is that? As we get into it, you're going to start to see the diagrams that show you how this actually all fits together. We're going to go through piece by piece every element of a photovoltaic install. We're going to understand those pieces very well, okay? And then we're going to tie it all together and you're going to see the way the, the, uh, the photovoltaic system works in full, okay? So we start with the batteries. We need to understand batteries, the different battery types, what the, uh, the battery principles, how is the battery um, presented in the array, what's its use, right? And then the various battery systems, okay? So the whole path to this chapter is that you're gonna be able to identify the major battery components and their functions, differentiate between the basic types and classifications of batteries, understand the operation of batteries and their discharging and charging characteristics. Okay. Understand how temperature, discharge, and charge rates, as well as electrolyte-specific gravity affect battery capacity and its life. All of these are very, very relevant. Okay. And then finally, finally, understanding the major principles and considerations as it relates to designing a battery bank. Okay. Reggie and I were speaking over the weekend. Reggie's very enthusiastic. He ain't going to wait. He couldn't wait. And so uh, we were speaking about um, how you can um, connect batteries and and increase either the voltage available or the runtime available or amp hours on the battery is what it's called. Um, and th that can be done with the different method of connecting. We'll, we'll see that uh, throughout this course. Mm. Batteries are collections of cells, right? that produce electric, uh, electricity through electrochemical reactions. So what you have within each battery is um, electroconductive material, okay? What that does is it creates a chemical reaction, and that chemical reaction, the, the, uh, the result of that chemical reaction is electricity. And that's what that is. It's electrical. It's electrical, electromechanical <laughs> um, functions and reactions. That's all you're getting out of a battery. And batteries have not changed. The battery design has not changed in uh, I, I want to say 100 years. It's been the same thing. Okay. So a battery is a collection of electromechanical cells that are contained in the same case, connected together electrically to produce a specific or desired voltage. A cell is a basic unit in a battery, okay, that stores electric energy in chemical bonds and delivers this energy through those reactions, okay? There are many cell and battery designs, all having different physical, electrical, and environmental characteristics. We're gonna talk about each of them, it's very important that you choose the correct battery for the appropriate application. When we get through in this class, you're going to find, well, I, I was going to say that for the most part, you're going to find that Kevin and I, um, and I've not even introduced you to your other, my, your co-instructor, Kevin. I shall. He's, he's away from the, um, the headset yet, but I will, in fact, get some introductions going. He's but, back. Um, is he back? I'm back, Peter. Yeah, okay, so let me let me slow down a little bit. <laughs> let me slow down a little bit. So I want to introduce you all to to Kevin. Um this brother uh has you know he's been really I mean from the beginning, I guess, you know, since the since the in the inception of Echo Training. Kev's been right there, man. I said, I think I want to train and he said, I wanna do it, you know. <laughs> okay, I want that. And so Kev's been there from the beginning. Now, what, what we've watched together is people come into these courses, 
and um, they were excited initially. Then all of a sudden they get hit with work. <laughs> or they get hit with with um, assignments, you know, and the shine kind of wears off a little bit. Well, so we've watched that happen over time. Um, and through that, we kind of massage these courses and develop these courses. Well, I mean, I, I don't even, you know, the way that I look at you, the way that I consider us in this space, in this time, is peers. You're not my students. You're peers. Once you get this, once you understand what it is, this, this content, you're going to be teaching me stuff. You're going to be telling me different stuff, right? And so uh, this is exactly how Kevin and I really came into being, is that peers in, in, in this thing called life, trying to get through it. Man, and i got to tell you something. I am, you will be highly impressed, and I'm going to just let your brother speak for himself. I mean, look, this, I've just never seen, no, I have. I see, I see myself, and now as I'm getting older, I'm saying, wow, damn, yeah, that's what it was. I, I could do this, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, and, and I, I think what you will find uh, in, in Kev as a coach, and just as you find in me, is that thing, yeah, that empowerment. That empowerment. So without, I'm not gonna. I could talk all night long. Kev, please introduce yourself to them. Some of them you might know already. Okay. Well, like Peter said, I've been with Echo Training since the beginning. Um, my first training with Peter and Queen Mojo was uh, the A plus training. I had no prior uh, computer experience, but through Peter's course and and uh, you know his tolerance of of me, uh, I was able to uh, learn A plus to the point where I could build my own computer. And you have to understand, I'm coming from a basis of uh, very little technical knowledge. So I know that these trainings do, in fact, work if you are willing to put in the time and dedication necessary to learn what's being taught. Um, in reference to the photovoltaics, um, I always had a an interest in that particular subject. Because I live in the country, and uh, for anyone who lives in the country in a rural setting, you realize that uh, power outages are the norm. And uh, one year I went through a severe power outage where my power was out for an extended period of time, over a week. <clears throat> and uh, I was in a, a position where I couldn't provide the necessities of life for myself and my family, and I vowed never to put myself in that position again. So I did preliminary research in the photovoltaics and a short time after that, Peter started his classes and uh, of course I enrolled and throughout the course of taking that class, I was able to build my own portable solar generator. And even though now we still experience power outages, the basic necessities are necessary for life. I'm able to, uh, you know, continue those in my home, and for that I'm, you know, eternally grateful and, and, and thankful. One of the things I wanted to say in reference to this particular course is that a lot of the information that Peter's going to give you uh, over the course of this course is going to be somewhat intimidating. And a lot of times when that occurs, people tend to shut down. They they tend to shut off. Um, when you take these classes with Echo, we're not just, it's not a student-teacher relationship. I've grown to understand that it's more of like a family-type relationship. We don't intend to leave anyone behind in these trainings. If you're sincere in your interest and sincere in your dedication to uh, learn what is being put forth, believe me, you will learn it. That's all that we ask is that you bring your A game and we'll bring ours. Um, beyond that, um, I just have one question because I see, Peter, that you're starting out with batteries as our first um, course yes. section in our course. Yes. Um, I just wanted to ask how many people, and you, you can just answer if you are in the affirmative, how many people here have any electrical knowledge whatsoever? I do. Okay. What is the extent of, and please uh, identify yourself, brother, and uh, could you 
relate to me what the extent of your electrical knowledge is. In um, automotive, I've been doing it 15 years for the military and a contractor. So you don't understand the basic and the terminologies that go surround electricity? I understand basics. I understand in depth. I understand basics, yes. Okay. How many other people? So it's only one out of how many students is here today? Yeah. One, two, three, three. five, six. So one out of seven has a basic. Well, there's going to be terms and, and terminologies expressed throughout the, this course where, which are electrical. And, and trust me, I have <laughs> a layman's understanding of electrical technology. But the terminology is oh so important. Yeah. If you are going to, with something that's put forth to you, if you understand what the word or the term is, then you can you know, fit it into whatever's being taught. If that's not the case, then I don't want it. The reason why I bring this up, Peter, and mm -hmm. I don't want anybody to be lost from the beginning. Right. You know, and I think that's what happened a lot of times last classes. Things kind of got away from us because it got so technical. Yeah. Two or three weeks in, two or three, you know, series of classes in that people got somewhat discouraged. and. You know, some of these things that are going to be taught, you're going to have to research and embellish in your own time, you yeah. know. But some of the basic things, like if I say Ohm's Law, you know, how many people I hope that those types of things and what is an electron, a proton, you know, how does it work, how does it travel, how these types of things that are the very foundation of photovoltaics, I just hope that during the course you know, early on that we get to some of that and that we infuse that also in the teaching. Mm -hmm. And you will see with the, and oh, wait, how many people are not, so there's a couple of people that are not actually on the computer. So I will put, um, I will put the, uh, the PDF in the room so that everybody can access it. Um, but going through the basic, um, photovoltaics, that chapter, is going to give you, um, it, it's going to give you the terminology. It's going to, you're going to have to do the reading, right? You're going to have to um, follow along and, and pay attention to what it is you're reading. But it is exactly right. There is a terminology, and so there's, there's basic terminology that's electrical, right? But then you're also going to be introduced to a terminology that is completely photovoltaic, and it doesn't really apply anywhere else, right? right? Um, where, uh, and we both learned that the things that we're going to be doing straddle a couple of different worlds. It straddles the, um, the automotive world. You'll see a lot of the different things you use in the automotive capacity, either photo, photo, maybe not a lot, but enough so that you'll say, oh, yeah, okay, I, I get that. Right, and then you're going to see a lot of the things that an electrician would use in their uh, in their world. So yeah, it's going to straddle a lot of worlds, and there's going to be um, a fair amount of of uh, terminology that you will have to come up to speed with. And and to to Kev's point, we don't want to go past a single word. If we get to a word and you don't know that word, you need to stop it. Wait a minute. What is that? And we can go on back and we can we can drill into that individual piece. You don't want to go past it. The worst thing that you could ever do in reading a book is come to a word that you don't know and simply go past it. Okay. Yeah, and I only say that, Peter, because, like I said, I don't I want to bring everybody along together, and uh, I want to ensure everybody here that what we're teaching in this class is learnable. If I can learn it, you don't know me, you don't know my circumstances, but I would venture to say that I am the elder in this group. And uh, it's been a while since I've been in uh, capacity to study. Trust me. So if I can learn it, I'm sure that everyone here can learn it. It's just that take a deep breath, you know, relax. If you have a question, ask it you know, and we will endeavor to, you know, answer that particular question. If not, we'll make it a 
a homework assignment, and you'll answer the question. That's real talk. <laughs> <laughs> That's real talk. <laughs> That's exactly right. And you'll bring it back for the rest of us. <laughs> we all learn it. You know, I am no expert. You know, I, I'm a qualified. Peter was saying that, you know, he would not describe himself as an expert either. But what we do have is knowledge of this particular, uh, uh, you know, course, and uh, we're going to impart that to everybody here. So we'll learn different things because it's, it's constantly evolving. New things happen. So we'll learn everything as we go along. So just relax. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't, you know, it ain't all that, you know, just, just, just do it. Just do it, man. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, man. <laughs> is everybody here? Did I ask another question, Peter? Please take your time, brother. All right. What do you hope to gain from this course? What is your end goal for a lot of people? here? I'm always curious to figure out, is, is it like a business or, is this, you know, something to generate income? Is it for personal use? Um, what do the rest of you intend to do with this knowledge? Well, um, I guess I'll speak first. I'm always talking. But, um, <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I, I want to hear. I said my, I said my, my end goal is threefold. Is um, is first the empowerment of self. Second, to reteach it to empower others, and three, money. Yeah. Okay, all three of those goals can be achieved. You know, mm -hmm. in terms of photovoltaic, the only restrictions are your own imagination. Real. You know, Real. You really, I mean, if if you can conceive it, uh, it can be done. It can be done. It's real talk. It's, I mean, it sounds fantastic. And and man, look, once you once you know, shoot, yeah, you know what happens. I ain't seen Kevin a month. This man been in his shed. <laughs> this man been building, you know. Well, I'm on the polar. I'm on the portable tip. My thing is shrinking, 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 shrinking. Yep. And the battery technology as it exists now is very restrictive in terms mm -hmm. of that, you know. But new batteries and, and new concepts are coming out all the time. So, mm -hmm. you know, it can be done, you know. So. Let's get started. Let's get started. Mm -hmm. What about everybody else? Because that was a great question. I want to hear what other ideas. Uh, Reggie, what do you plan to do with this knowledge that you take from here? What was that? Reggie. Reggie's still here? Oh, you muted. Reggie, what you plan to do? Oh, I got you. What you plan to do with it, brother? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I said, nice to meet you, Brother Kevin. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, I, uh, my passion and right now is, uh, is learning to uh, create solar solutions. Uh, I plan on going to best out, and I want to be able to help uh, enhance the power situation of everything that's very bad right now. Turn it down, it don't hurt people, you know. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. portable solar solution is my main right now. A man after my own heart. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. That's why I asked. I'm just to be over there right now. It's just a situation. Very bad, and most of the like African generators running off of uh, diesel and gas. Yeah. We can come up with a, um, a product that eliminates gas use, you know, save them a lot of money, or um, more feasible to use a unit that doesn't have to run off of fuel. That's yep. one of the main purposes of the product development that we can actually go and do and that makes money and enhance people's um, living situation. They're more like. 
Yeah, man. Yeah, that's rough beats. That's rough beats. Good stuff. All right. And so we had um, we had queens in the room. What were your hopes? What were your forward-thinking ideas related to photovoltaics? Well, uh, for me, <laughs> personally, <laughs> at, at, at first I was thinking about something that was more static, like building, uh, like fitting the shed out back with panels to be able to use it as living space. But now I'm leaning more towards like, you know how in the last class we talked about the flexible panels and the roll-up panels? Yeah. Like you take with you. So I feel like that would be a better option to put, you know, to put together for that type of project so that it can have multiple uses as opposed to stationary panels attached to the top of yep. um, the small shed. So mm -hmm. that's what I want to do in Either I'm gonna do it or I'm gonna put it on my honey boo list for you to do it. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna work on it together. <laughs> well, just so you know, I will say, and again, these are the things that we're gonna learn as we go along. But I will say, and Kev probably knows this right now. Um, I got a flexible panel, right? I guess maybe I didn't read the dimensions of it very well. Okay. Because when you roll this thing out, I rolled it out one time and said, damn it, you stop rolling. Look, <laughs> roll back in. <laughs> this thing go across the street. Wow. Now, again, for what it's used for, right, this is something that you would adhere to a roof, to a pitched roof in a southerly facing direction. Okay. That, for that application, perfect. Perfect. In a portable capacity, ain't no way in the world. That is not portable. That roll so up. The flexible, you, so the flexible panels come in different sizes? Or yes, they do. And you can get smaller ones you, that are going to give you a smaller the water. Super size, you just want super size because that's how you do it. Yeah, well, you I mean, you shop. I want the power. <laughs> You know, I know. No. That's how you do. Hey, so you know what's going to happen? It's going to go over the roof somewhere. That's what's going to happen. Right. <laughs> All right. How about some of the other queens? What if, What are your What are your um, forward thinking ideas related uh, related to portable tax? Good evening. Um, this is Orami. I want to first and foremost be able to prove to myself that I can master this information. I have the textbook and I read chapters one and two uh, for the first class session. I'm yeah. like, dude, I got this. And then as I started looking further into the book, mm -hmm. it was like, oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I want to first, yeah, I want to first know that I have, and I do, I'm a smart person, so I want to be able to master this. Mm -hmm. Forward thinking, I want to take the information that I, once I master it, go into a couple of shelters in this area, pull out a, a few brothers who are hungry for information, and there are some. Um, there are some whose minds are still pretty clear, and they have wonderful backgrounds, a lot of them having been in the military, so I'm sure some of them already have some technical training in something. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to identify a few, teach them what I have, I want to be able to sponsor them. I pay for it and teach them what I have and then take them, deploy them in the area or maybe into Haiti, maybe yeah. somewhere else, and tell them, okay, Sound like somebody you else need to it. help people. Mm -hmm. You need to help yourself and help your people. And yeah. 
also make some money. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, um, you know, the book isn't thick. It's not a big book. It, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> and, you know, I'm going to tell you something, because Kev's hit on it earlier, because we all got to that place, you know. <laughs> yeah. We all got to that place where we was like, man, I got this. This ain't nothing. And then hit them equations, right? Yes. And was like, well, wait, what? <laughs> what you say? <laughs> but you know what we 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 you know what we did. So we went through the hard way. We really did. We went through it the hard way, um, mm -hmm. because what we found in this book is they have a very specific agenda. Mm -hmm. They have a very specific agenda, and that agenda is to maintain, at the end of the day, this kind of monopoly. Same way you got an electrical union and the same way that you got a carpenter's union and like this. Well, they maintain this standard. This And again, it is important. They've got a standard vernacular. They've got a standard um, site spec that they have in mind. They've got a bunch of these different standards in mind. Well, here's the problem. Those standards, are exactly the reason that you don't see solar proliferation today. Because they can't get their stuff together enough to be able to make it um, cost effective for the man on the street. The man on the street can't afford to go solar today. It's a viable choice. It's the smart solution for a nation, it's for the world. It's a smart solution. But they can't get their stuff together enough to come up with enough standards to get it to the street. And it's a it's a sum total of the bureaucracy. It's a total of the um, cost to produce. It's a bunch of different elements. But at the end of the day, they all come to the same thing. Non-proliferation and solar been around since 1950s, right? And we still are not a solar world. Well, it's all profit motivated. Yeah. Right. Nobody wants to take that cut. And you don't have to buy mine. And so that's that's, one of the reasons why I ask, I mean, if you would do the average size house, 2,000, you know, square feet home in solar, you're looking at $30,000, $35,000. Now, a good portion of that could, you know, come back to you in terms of government rebates and, and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. But for most of us, even that $15,000 figure, cut it in half, is, is not viable. Right. That's why portable... Is, is my way of thinking. You know, even though it may call for, you can't do your home, home and will call for a sacrifice in terms of what you can use, your your ability to sustain life can still be maintained in an emergency type situation. Now, if you're looking to do your whole house, it's a whole different situation. Right. And, that's, and solar, is, Peter touched on, is expensive. That's why I asked the question because and I'm going to speak to whoever the last speaker was, reading them books and, and doing things theoretically is fine. But if you truly want to understand, once you get the principles, and we will teach you the principles, but once you get the principles of photovoltaics down, the only way you come to master or to come to a full understanding of the subject matter is to build something no matter how small it, it may be. It may just be a phone charger, you know, but once you make those connections, you know, how many people here have soldered? How many people here, you know, wire gauges and, and sizes? And all those questions are going to go through your mind, but once you do it once, yeah. you, then everything will come full circle. So that's what I, why I asked the question because it seems as though most people are, are dealing with this in the portable sense, and that is the, you know, area of expertise that both Peter and, and myself are most familiar with. So th that's good. But and he's going to encourage, and I strongly encourage you, you know, once you go start going through this course, you start doing things, and you start going on Amazon, and you start looking at five watt panels and and how you could charge your phones and and your electronic, your tablets and computers and, and different things. <laughs> Seriously, think about doing that. I mean, oh yeah, I was in to Peter's course about what a month before I built my first portable solar generator, the black one, the first one. So 
but I had came into his class having done my research prior to. Yeah. But, you know, his class, you know, answered a lot of questions, and it gave me the confidence, you know, because when you start talking about batteries, you start about, talking about voltage and amperage mm-hmm. and all these things, you're talking about possibility of injury. <laughs> That's right. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. You know, you, you I've blown up a few electronic components, but in each case, it was a learning process, mm-hmm. you know. You know, I've said sparks flying, trust mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. But uh, I had to go through that in order to come to the point where I had the confidence. Now, I knew not to do that particular thing again. <laughs> damn right. <laughs> now, I'm not saying this to frighten anybody. I'm saying this because this is practical. You yeah. are dealing with a medium here that electrical current is dangerous, mm-hmm. and I don't want to undercut that. So oh, it's no place for overconfidence. This is a situation that is best served with caution, That's right. information, and knowledge. Get that knowledge. But as your knowledge increases, think about, you know, something that you could use. Don't build something for it to sit in, in you know, in the shelf in your closet. You're going, you know, all of us have phones and tablets and computers, and we could charge those things with the sun. And once you do that, then when you talk about dealing with, you know, 2,000, watt inverters and, and some of the bigger things that we're going to be dealing with, you'll have the confidence because the basics are the same, no matter whether you're dealing with a 5-watt system or a 4,000-watt system. The basics and the connections are all the same. The components are the same. They're just larger. That's all. That's, That's all. all. I mean, if you're talking about look and at the end of this, right, at, and, and I don't know whether or not you, you find yourself doing this, because, Kev, I got a, a around the corner from me. Um, they've got a wastewater treatment plant. Um, thankfully, it's not so close that I have to, you know, be downwind or anything. But um, it's run with a solar array. I, I might, you know what? I might skate over there tomorrow and take some pictures of it. Um, huge field. Um, and... So I've, you know, I've gone through there and looked at it. But then, you know, what happens is I'll go over and look at a. Um, have you ever seen an electric, uh, an electric, uh, what do you call an electric array? Uh, have you ever seen? Has anybody ever seen an electric array like in in the city or the city limits where it's fenced off and it's all kinds of huge and it's you know just gigantic electrical components? No one's seen none of them. Well. What you see is the same thing. It's the exact same thing, just bigger scale, big, big gauge, huge wires that are carrying an awful lot of voltage. But when you, what you see there is exactly what you see inside your cell phone. It's the same thing. The same thing. Once you get the principle, you can do it on the micro or the macro. Same thing. Right. Now, there's one other queen. That did not answer what her focus was. What was your name again, Queen? There was one other. She's shy. She spoke earlier. I forgot the name. Wait, once uh, once everybody gets on the computers, uh, I'll be able to see everybody's names. It'll be a lot easier for an old man. Who's <laughs> 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 talking? <laughs> All right. Basics on batteries. Okay. If you've done any research on batteries on how they work, uh, you, what you should look for when selecting, you're probably buried in information. And I encourage everybody to look to start. And again, I'm going to send you. I got some handouts for you. Things that are going to show you um, some of those basic informations as well as your readings. Okay. Um, some of the information that you're going to find on battery seems to be conflicting, okay? Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about a couple of different types of batteries, right? The first that we're going to uh, uh, explain lead-acid batteries. Um, and I'm going to try to not kill you with technical information, try to keep it as clean as possible, okay? Um, the other thing is in everything that we speak about in photovoltaics, there is a margin, so there is a margin. So they'll give you a solar panel, right? 
and they'll call it a 100-watt panel, right? 12 volts. Depending on the wires that you've got connecting, depending on the components that you have, depending on how you've got that connected will determine whether or not you actually get what it is rated for. This is true for the battery. This is true for your car. This is true for everything. Whenever they say your car is going to get, you know, uh, 30 miles to the gallon, they're talking about absolute, complete, optimal condition. Your tires are perfectly inflated. I mean, everything is perfect, and you will get that mileage. One variable off, and it changes the equation. Okay? That is true with everything, with batteries, with everything. Okay. Okay, so the commercial use of the lead-acid battery is, as I said, 100 years old. Okay, it's the same chemical principle that was used to store energy that was used, you know, again, 100, 150 years ago. Okay. If you understand the basics, you will have fewer battery problems that will gain greater battery performance, reliability, and longevity. Okay? A battery is like a piggy bank. If you, if you keep taking out of the piggy bank and put nothing in, soon you'll have nothing, right? Present-day chassis battery power, power requirements are huge. Think about the car. Think about the tractor. Think about all of the various electrical devices that the battery is actually running, right? They all require a source of reliable power. A poor battery condition can cause expensive electronic component failure, okay? Wow, look at that. Did you know the average auto has 11 pounds of wire in the electrical system? That's interesting. Okay. Um, it was not long ago when trailers or motorhomes had a single 12-volt house battery. Today, it's standard to have two or more house, batter house batteries powering inverters up to 4,000 watts. Right. One of the most common portable applications that you will see in photovoltaics is on RVs, on vans. I, 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 I kind of kicked myself today. I certainly used, I had a van, uh, a conversion van, and it had solar panels on it that were, that would augment battery power. Um, and they were, it was awesome, uh, but I didn't, I didn't really know anything at that point because I certainly would have um, expanded its usability, expanded it, ex yeah. Yeah, I definitely would have expanded that. But your most common portable application today is definitely on RVs and vans. Um, and in the bottom of that RV, they've got serious battery banks. They can, yeah, they're good. Now, they got a solar application on top of their van, and they got a huge battery bank in there. Are they running that RV on solar? No, no. The solar is the, the RV is still using a combustion engine, okay? They have electrical power, all that they need, okay? Um, average battery life has become shorter as energy requirements have increased. Lifespan depends on usage. And when we say usage, it's, it's not just how frequently you're using it, but how much are you draining it and uh, charging it back up, right? Um, a battery is like, or the cells in a battery are like a muscle in an arm. If you don't move the arm, the arm will atrophy, right? Components of the, your range of motion will diminish. It will begin to die. That's the same thing with a battery. It needs to be moved. It needs to be flexed, okay? Um, so lifespan of the battery depends on usage, six months to 48 months. Yet only 30% of all batteries actually reach the 48 month mark. You can extend your battery life by hooking it up to a solar charger during the off months, okay? So the truth is the solar charger is a friend to your battery where other, the other things, the other applications to keep your battery alive, yeah, we've got battery tenders and, you know, we've got these different things. The truth is the most efficient method, again, and you're going to see how many cells, what do I need, like that. But that's going to be the, your most efficient method. Just leave that connected to your battery. Okay. Um, 
of lead acid battery is made up of plates, lead and lead oxide, okay? Various other elements are used to change density and hardness or porosity of those plates, okay? With a 35% sulfuric acid and 65% water solution, this solution is called electrolyte, which causes a chemical reaction that produces electrons. Okay. When you test a battery with a hydrometer, uh, I should probably bring you up a hydrometer. Let me see if I've got one in the. Okay, this doesn't, yeah, it's not as direct. Okay. Um, so the lead uh, uh, with a hydrometer, when you test a battery with a hydrometer, you are measuring the amount of sulfuric acid in the electrolyte, right? It, we needed 35% sulfuric, 65% water. If your reading is low, it means the chemistry that makes electrons is lacking. So where does the sulfur go? It is resting on the battery plates. And when you recharge the battery, the sulfur returns to the electrolyte. Okay, so this is a chemical process. And I'm going to find the appropriate chapter for you to read in relation to that. Mm -hmm. uh, we must take safety when working around batteries, right? Remove all your jewelry, take off all watches. You, you, you know, you know what's going to happen is. <laughs> and again, you want to always exercise caution. The battery is hot. I don't care how big or small it is. It's hot. It is always ready to be hot, okay? So you want to always exercise caution around that. That's power, okay? No matter how big or small, it's power, okay? We must think safety when working around and with batteries. Remove all jewelry. After all, you don't want to melt your watch band while you're wearing the watch. The hydrogen gas that batteries make when charging is very explosive. We've seen several instances of batteries blowing up and drenching everything in sulfuric acid. That is no fun and would have been a good time to use those safety goggles that were hanging on the wall. Um, <laughs> just, break out your, heck, just break out your disco outfit. Polyester is not affected by sulfuric acid. Wow, really? Polyester is not affected by sulfuric acid, but anything with cotton will be eaten up. If you do feel the need to make a fashion statement, wear junk clothes, <laughs> uh, polyester is out of style. Um, when doing work on, on vehicles, it's best to disconnect the ground cable. Just remember, you are messing with corrosive acid, explosive gases, and hundreds of amps of electrical current. So basically, you've got two different types of lead acid batteries. Okay, and I'm going to swing back around through this uh, battery chapter as well. Ooh, I've got some, yeah, I've got some good stuff for you. Okay. Um, basically, you have two different types of lead acid batteries along with three subcategories. The two main types are starting or cranking, right? And when you go and buy a, ba a battery, it says, uh, it'll say um, CCH, cold crank hours, right? And the other type is a deep cycle or a marine golf cart battery, okay? The starting or the cranking battery is designed to deliver quick bursts of energy, such as your car, right? Your car, you hit it, it requires, give me that power. Bam, it hits it, it's hard, it has everything it needs. It hits that alternator, the alternator's charged, the car starts up and it begins to warm itself up, okay? It's a quick hit. So it requires quick bursts of energy and therefore has a greater plate count. There's more plates inside based on that. The plates are thinner and have somewhat different material composition. Okay. The deep cycle battery has less instant energy, but greater long-term energy delivery. Okay. Deep cycle batteries have thicker plates and can survive a number of discharge cycles. Starting batteries should not be used for deep cycle applications because the thinner plates are more prone to warping 
and pitting when discharged. Okay. So again, the deep cycle battery is the battery that is prepared, it's willing and able to be um, run down and charged up repeatedly, repeatedly. Whereas your, um, your cranking is not. All that is designed for is to hit right now. Okay, it's not designed to get drained. Uh, a wet cell, or a, which is also called a flooded battery, a wet cell or flooded battery, also known as a gel cell, or an AGM, which is absorbed glass mat. These are all variations of the lead acid battery. Okay. The wet cell comes in two styles, serviceable and maintenance free. Both of them are filled with electrolyte and basically the same. Okay. The difference is there's one that you add water to and one that you don't. And you, those are the, those are your grandfather's battery that had those caps on top. And you pop those off, and when it ran out, you could just pour more water in. Yeah, and they would say, "Be careful, don't touch that." Why? Because you had sulfuric acid. You had a 35% sulfuric acid and a 65% um, water. Right? Um, yes, uh, the gel cell and the AGM batteries are specialty batteries that typically cost twice as much as a premium wet cell. However, they store very well and do not tend to sulfate or degrade as easily as wet cell. There is little chance of a hydrogen gas explosion or corrosion when using these batteries. These are the safest lead acid batteries you can use. Gel cell and some AGM batteries may require a special charging rate. If you want the best, most versatile type consideration should be given to the AGM for applications such as marine, RV, solar, audio, power sports, and standby power, just to name a few. If you don't use or operate your equipment daily, the AGM battery will hold their charge better than other types. If you must depend on top-notch battery performance, spend the extra money, gel cell batteries, are being sold, but AGM batteries are replacing them in most applications. There is some common confusion re uh, regarding the AGM batteries because different manufacturers call them by different names. And this is, again, you, you know what? This doesn't, this transcends this industry. We even said it. Um, there's no standard. They, they'll call it what they will. What you have to know is what you're looking for. You have to know the keywords. CPH, that's not the battery you want, right? That's the cold cranking hours. You know that's not the battery you want. AGM batteries are replacing them in most applications. There is, uh, there is some common confusion regarding AGM batteries because different manufacturers call them by different names. Some of the more common names are sealed regulated valve dry cell, non-spillable, non-spillable, that's real nice, and valve-regulated lead acid uh, batteries. In most cases, AGM batteries will give greater lifespan and greater uh, cycle life than a wet cell battery. A special note about gels. It is very common for individuals to use the term gel cell when referring to sealed, maintenance-free batteries much like one would use Kleenex when referring to facial tissue or a Xerox machine when referring to a copy machine. Be very careful when specifying a gel cell battery charger. Many times we are told by customers they are requiring a charger for a gel cell battery, and in fact, it's not a gel cell. The AGM, the AGM battery, the absorbed glass mat, Construction allows the electrolyte to be suspended in close proximity with the plate's active material. In theory, this enhances both the, uh, the discharge and recharge efficiency. Common manufacturer applications include high performance engine starting, power sport, deep cycle, solar, and storage battery. The larger AGM batteries, uh, 
uh, souls are deep cycle and they deliver the best life performance if recharged before allowing that to dip before below 50% discharge rate. I'll read that again. I'll say it again. The battery, the AGM battery performs and lasts longer. It's going to deliver the best life if you don't, if they are recharged before they reach the 50% discharge rate. So that means you only want to use that battery to half, okay, before you're charging it back up again. We're going to, we're going to, this is, this is pretty critical. I wouldn't, this is pretty, Peter, I, I wouldn't recommend doing even that 50, as right? a practice. Yes, 50 yes. as a practice. I wouldn't recommend that, you know, over a period of time. That will definitely shorten your battery life. It's definitely going to kill your battery life. I, I mean, really, I think both Kevin and I kind of fall in around the, the 80% mark. That would be my suggestion. And once your battery, you know, gets you. We'll get into it later, of course, once you got a voltage meter or, you know, a multi-tester and you test your battery, if it's below 80% capacity, you should recharge that battery. You shouldn't yeah. allow it to go down to, to uh, total depletion. 50% is like totally depleting that battery. Right. And why? The reason that you don't want to have it go down and we're saying 80, manufacturers saying 50, we're saying 80. The reason you don't want it to do that is because you bought this battery and you want this battery to be able to perform for you as long as it possibly can before you have to buy it again. If you, dis if you deep discharge that battery, you are necessarily cutting the life away from it. It is not going to take the charges and discharges that you thought you were going to get. Okay, so this is very important, right, Reggie? And the different the, the the different applications of people that we're that are on the call. This is very important. <laughs> so you buy a, a big beefy battery, you still only want to use eighty percent. So what is it they're trying to what is it that you're trying to power through the night? What is it that you need to power up? Do your math, right? You have to do your math. Yeah. Oh, we're going to get into it, and you're going to understand it. Okay. I got glasses. Can Go I ask a question? Based yes. on the information that Peter's related, <laughs> which do you think, what type of battery does the class think would be the best solution for a solar application? He mentioned lead acid. He mentioned gel, AGM, uh, these different types of batteries. Which do you think, you know, I know you don't know, but just take a guess. Which do you think, based only on what he's already related, do you think would be the best for a uh, solar application? AGM. Exactly. An AGM battery. Very good. <laughs> listening good that's exactly right you want a deep cycle agm battery and you want a deep cycle because deep cycle batteries are made to charge and discharge multiple times which is what you're going to be doing if you're only allowed to discharge down to 80 percent as a general rule you can go down to 70 and 60 or whatever but as a general rule i don't let my battery deplete beyond 20 percent I recharge it. Mm -hmm. Good job. Mm -hmm. So let's swing back around with a second. So that we spoke about the AGM. Okay, let me finish up the uh, these uh, these batteries before I jump back into the PowerPoint. Um, uh, the the quick dirty over the batteries. Right? Um, so the AGM. Uh, the uh, AGM construction allows the electrolyte to be sus suspended in close proximity with the plate. Okay. Uh, no, I've gone through that. Um, good, good, good. When deep cycle AGM batteries are discharged to a rate of no less than 60%, the cycle life will be 300 plus cycles. So 
when we speak about cycles, that's charge and, and discharge, charge and discharge. So what the manufacturer is saying as it relates to this AGM battery is if you discharge it to a 60% level, you can count on 300 cycles at that ratio. You can, they're saying you're gonna be able to charge and discharge to 60% 300 times. Yeah, I paid for my battery. I'm I'm not going down that low. I'm just not. I'm not. I want I want my battery as long as I can. First of all, I don't like buying them. Batteries will break your back. You do not want to be carrying batteries back and forth. This is not something that you want to have to buy on a regular basis. Not only is and again, the two most expensive components of your photovoltaic install are your batteries and your balance of system. Right, the balance of system is what holds your um, panels into place on a roof in a stationary install, okay, or on a ground-based install. The balance of system is the apparatus that holds your panels or your array into place. Those are the two most expensive components of any photovoltaic application. Okay? Not only is it expensive, but the battery is expensive on your back. It is heavy. It is very heavy, unless you get into the lithium ion, which is three times the price of the AGM. The AGM is expensive already. When you start talking about lithium ion, because lithium ion is a very specialized battery, it's very small, um, it's very light. Um, it, it's like, so it's three times the price, it's like three, it's, um, uh, diminished three times the weight of traditional batteries. So it's very portable, very usable. The gel cell is similar to the AGM style because the electrolyte is suspended, but different because technically the AGM battery is still considered to be a wet cell. The electrolyte in a gel cell has a cilia, a silica additive that causes it to set up or stiffen. The recharge voltage on this type of cell is lower than the other styles of lead acid battery. This is probably the most sensitive cell in terms of adverse reactions to overcharge, to over voltage charging. Gel cell batteries are best used in very deep cycle application and may last a bit longer in hot weather applications. If the incorrect battery charger is used on a gel cell battery, poor performance and premature failure is certain. Okay. The CCA, cold cranking amps, so the cold amps, amp hours, and RC, what are all these acronyms, right? Uh, these are the standards that most battery companies use to rate the output and capacity of a battery, okay? CCA, cold cranking amps, is a measurement of the number of amps a battery can deliver at zero Fahrenheit for 30 seconds and not drop below 7.2 volts. Okay. Cold cranking amps is a measurement of the number of amps a battery can deliver at zero Fahrenheit for 30 seconds and not drop below 7.2 volts. It's a consistent measure of voltage, right, over a period of time. So a high CCA battery rating is especially important in starting battery applications and in cold weather. This measurement is not particularly important to deep cycle batteries, again, because the deep cycle battery isn't caring about that 30 second period to deliver quickly, consistently right now. Doesn't care. It wants it over time. Okay. CA is cranking amps measured at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. This rating is also called marine cranking or amps or MCA. Hot cranking amps or HCA is seldom used any longer but is measured at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So any guesses why we're talking about the zero degree Fahrenheit and the CA is starting at a 32 degrees Fahrenheit? Any idea why? That would be a true statement for these battery types. 
Can anybody guess why? Why? Well, guess why we're talking about this? Well, yeah. no. Why are we measuring it? Why are we measuring the CCA and the CA at a zero degree for 30 seconds and a 32 degrees Fahrenheit? Why are we measuring it in that way? Because the temperature changes? Well, that's, that's, the, the thing is, is what they're doing is, so we just spoke about another kind of battery, and that's the hot cranking amps, right, the HCA. Well, they're not talking about the HCA much. The one that we're talking about is the cold crank, right? Because we're in North America and it's freezing. So what your battery has to be able to do, if in your car right now, what your battery has to be able to do is to deliver consistent electricity at the coldest point, mm -hmm. at zero Fahrenheit. Right? So they're not going to advertise. You know where you would find advertise the HCA battery? Arizona, where you have heat, where you have extreme heat, that is when it would be important to you to have a battery that is measured at 80 degree Fahrenheit, as opposed to a battery that's measured at zero Fahrenheit for a 30 second duration. So the majority of the times you're gonna see CCA, cold cranking apps, cause you're in cold, <laughs> cold back with the has North America. <laughs> Somebody just joined, I thought I heard. Uh, Marcel got on the computer. Yes, uh -huh. recent. Um, computer gave me problems, so I'm using my phone. Okay, all right. All right. Um, reserve, RC, reserve capacity, is a very important rating. This is the number of minutes a fully charged battery at 80 degrees Fahrenheit will discharge 25 amps until the battery drops below 10.5 volts. That 10.5 volts, that means dead battery. That's, uh, that's the, that is that threshold that they're talking about, 60% tanked. That battery is almost, that, that's as low as you should go, right? So RC, the RC or the reserve capacity, this is the number of minutes a fully charged battery at 80 degrees Fahrenheit will discharge 25 amps of power until the battery drops below 10.5. Okay. So that's a discharge rate. Amp hour or AH is usually found on deep cycle batteries. The standard rating is an amp taken for 20 hours. What this means is a 100 amp hour rated battery is this. Draw, draw from the battery for 20 hours and it will provide 100 amp hours. Okay. Draw from the battery for 20 hours and it will provide a total of 100 amp hours. This translates to about five amps an hour Okay, so that's 0.5 times 20 equals 100. Okay, so that's five amps an hour times 20 equals 100. Okay, so that's 20 hours. So you get a 100, 100 amp hour battery equals 20 hours of runtime. Okay. However, it's very important to know that the total time of discharge and load applied is not a linear relationship. Very, very important. Reggie, I, you and I have had this conversation. It is important to know that the total time of discharge and load applied is not a linear relationship. As your load increases, your realized capacity decreases. So what does that mean? You've got a 100 amp hour battery, okay? And the manufacturer said, you got 20 hours on that 100 amp hour. Okay, so what did you just do? You plugged in, you know, your power went off. And you plugged in your computer. Okay, well, your computer is gonna take 300 watts and that's gonna take, it's gonna be a consistent 300 watts and if you're gonna have that on for an hour, that is eating into your total amp hour. Okay, so that's fine, there's your computer. Now you just plugged in your monitor. 
Now you plugged in a lamp. All of these things, your 20 hours is now being diminished. And you can watch it happen. You're going to watch it happen. You're going to watch a, a full 125 amp hour battery that is completely capable of carrying the essential devices in your home for a period of time. The more you plug in, the less that time is. Okay. This means if you discharge that same 100 amp hour battery by a 100 amp load, it will not give you one hour of runtime. On the can on the contrary, the perceived capacity of the battery will be that of 64 amp hours. Did that make sense? Definitely not. No, you didn't get that. Okay. We're going to run over that again. The amperage, the amp hours. And I've got, I think, a better uh, explanation of it here as well. Give me one second. I slide these glasses on and off like you wouldn't believe now. See, it, it, it may seem as though, like, I guess it was 100 amp, and then you connect it to another 100 amps, and it should have been an hour, but it was actually 20 hours. So well, that's isn't sort of, it? Sort of it's an equation. Of it's saying, okay, so again, uh, the uh, draw from the battery for 20 hours. So you've got a 20 hour block of time, and it will provide 100 amp hours, 100 amps for that 20 hours. That translates, so you're dividing the amps over those hours. So that translates to five amps an hour. So for 20 hours, you've got five amps available to you, okay? Now plug in a, a radio, right? You still got the same five amps in, in that hour. That's it. The more you connect, the less time you have. You still got just that five amps in that hour. So you're talking about a 100 amp hour battery. You got five amps per hour to spend. If you exceed five amps per hour, what happens? Runtime decreases. That's it. That's it. I got a better, uh, I'm going to run back through on, because I've got a better, um, this is a quick and dirty um, mm -hmm. introduction to the batteries. I've got some more. I got more for you. Uh, battery maintenance is an important issue. The battery should be cleaned using a baking soda and water solution. A couple now, 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 now. This, um, this that we're speaking of really at this point kind of goes into the automotive. Right. Well, no, not necessarily so, because if you use if you're using a solar array and it's outside and it's in the elements, then yeah, you're gonna end up with corrosion. You're gonna end up with exactly what they're saying. So yeah, the battery should be cleaned with a baking soda and water solution. A couple of tablespoons to a pint of water. Cable connections need to be cleaned and tightened as battery problems are often taught, caused by dirty and loose connections. Okay. The serviceable batteries, right? So grandpa's old battery, need to have the fluid level checked. Use only mineral-free water. Distilled is best as all impurities have been removed and there is nothing left that could contaminate your cells. Don't overfill battery cells, especially in warmer weather, but weather because the natural fluid expansion in hot weather can push excess electrolytes from the battery. Yeah, they make that sound real tame. Push in ex excess electrolytes from the battery. <laughs> To prevent corrosion of cables on top of the post, use a small bead of silicone sealer at the base of the post and place a felt battery washer over it. Coat the washer with high temperature grease or petroleum jelly, then place cable on the post and tighten. Coat the exposed cable and end with grease. And um, yeah, coat, uh, cover that up with grease and that's how to um, eliminate corrosion over the life of your battery and its posts. Um, Kev mentioned something that you definitely want to grab, and we'll, I'll put some images of it. 
um, and and it's utilized. Well, you know, we'll get some images up in there, and that's a voltmeter, or uh, I'm sorry, not a voltmeter. Get a multimeter. Get a multimeter. You can get them for six, seven dollars. You're going to need it. You will use it. I promise. Okay. So now we're going to go through some terminology that is specific to um, the photovoltaic. Peter? Yes, sir. I just wanted to interject a few things. Um, I see the amp hour, the explanation of the amp hours on the battery, and this is information that when you purchase a battery, which probably come with it, but in practical uh, usage, amp hours don't, the amount of amp hours listed on your, your battery really doesn't do us any, give us any real information. What you're going to learn later on is how to convert that information into watt hours. And watt hours is the information that is more practical. Usable, of, yep. Of, yeah, of your load. So yep. don't agonize over that, you know, how figuring out amp hours because your, your appliances don't run off of amperage. They'll be running off of wattage. That's, that's right. The, that's the information that is most useful. And in terms of battery maintenance, you know, you want to make sure that you have a good contact because in each level of these components that comprise the photovoltaic system, you're going to have loss. Nothing is what is indicated when you purchase it. There are you no know, uh, uh, perfect situations where everything is going to operate at 100% capacity. So in terms of your battery, you clean off those posts, even if they appear clean to you, you clean them off and you just put a thin coat of Vaseline on the post and inside the, uh, the terminal. Terminal. And that will prevent a lot of your potential corrosive uh, uh, situation. It's a thin coat of Vaseline. You can go in and touch it, it won't shock. So, yeah, just when you get a new battery, you clean the post make, with a little sandpaper, or if you got one of them uh, steel wire contraptions that they use to clean batteries, clean it off, even if it appears to be clean, because it could have been sitting on the shelf for a period of time. It sure was. Yeah, and clean it off and apply a thin coat of Vaseline before you make your connection. Just wanted to interject that. And to um, Kev's point, you go ahead. Um, since um, since we're talking about wattage, and um, you know, I, I know a lot of things in the house run an alternate current. So um, I'm I'm really kind of, you know, I'm, I'm trying to understand how 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 can you take a DC system to run a yeah. current well, system? We didn't go over. My, the, I'm going too far. My yeah, we going you gonna get that a little bit because please, we didn't go over what comprises Hello? a photovoltaic system. system. A whole system of a system. Yeah. Hello? Um maybe Peter might relate that now. Hello? Yep. Yeah, I guess my computer went out a little bit. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, he he's exactly right, because you did not see a full photovoltaic system yet. I didn't show you an image of an entire system at this point. Because uh and I'm going to give you, let me see if I can find a diagram for you now um, on that so you can see it. Because the battery plays a big part. Okay. One part. The battery plays a big part. The battery, so your electricity in a photovoltaic system is coming from the battery. The solar panel is recharging the battery. That's what the solar panel does in a photovoltaic system. It recharges the battery. Peter, if you like, while you're getting ready to do your terminology, I'll just give them the five components of a photovoltaic system. And if, if anybody who's, you know, in the class, I'm sure you all got pens and notebooks and are taking notes. These are the five components of a photovoltaic system. The PV module, which is your, you know, the uh, solar panel. Second is what is called a solar charge controller. And I'm not going to get into what each component does because we'll do that during the course of the class. The third component is called an inverter, which is 
relating to, I believe it was uh, Gregory, his question, how do you change the voltage? And the fourth component is a battery, which is a storage. And the fifth component of a photovoltaic system is your load, what you are running mm -hmm. off of it. Okay, say that one more time, please. The first is the PV module or the solar panel. Second is the solar charge controller. Third is the yeah. charge controller. Did you hear? Did you get that? Yeah, my, yeah, my you know, computer went out on me. I'm listening to um, say it again. Now, so what's the components? The five components of a PV system are solar panel. Okay, solar panel. Uh huh. Charge controller. Charge controller. You can right now on the screen. All right. Inverter. Inverter. Uh huh. Battery. Uh huh. And your load. What you're running, whatever. Oh, you're running. okay. I got it. Those cool. are the five components of any PV system. Mm -hmm. Either whether it's micro, <laughs> portable, or whole house. Yep. Mm. Yep. And the diagram that you see on screen, let me blow it up a little bit. You all can see that. I will also um, share it in the room. The diagram you see on screen, I promise you, is what you will work on. You know, really. You will. What's that? They're not ready for that one yet. <laughs> I know, I know. They're not, but, they, but we're going to keep this. You're going to use this. Yeah. Okay? But this is the, this is a photovoltaic system, just like that. Exactly. We're going to get into these connections. We're going to get into the wires. You see the gauges there, the fuses, everything. You're going to understand this. But I'm going to tell you something. When <laughs> you go to build your system, you're going to have written down so many notes, and you're going to have diagrams, and you're going to have plans, and you're going to have all kinds of stuff that you've prepared for yourself, and you're going to throw all that crap out, and you're going to go right back to that simple diagram. Yeah. It's all together. Yeah, it does. So on the, on the area of amp versus watt, let's touch on that, okay? Capacity is the measure of the electrical energy storage potential of a cell or battery. Several physical factors affect the capacity, including the quantity of active material, the number, the, uh, design, and dimensions of the plates that we talked about earlier, and the electrolyte concentration, right? 35% sulfuric acid and the 65% water. Um, operational factors affecting capacity include discharge rate, charging method, temperature, age, and condition of the cell or battery. Capacity is, com is commonly expressed in ampere hours, AH, amp hours, okay. but can also be expressed in watt hours. For example, a battery that delivers five amps for 20 hours has delivered 100 amp hours. Okay. If the battery charges 12 volts during discharge, the capacity can also be expressed as 1,200 watt hours, which would be 100 amp hours times 12 volts equals 1,200 watt hours, okay? So your conversion from amp hours to watt hours is times the voltage, okay? So 100 amp hours times 12 volts equals 1,200 watt hours. So you've got a 100 amp hour battery, which equals 1,200 watt hours. What are you going to plug in? What are you going to use? And how long are you going to use that? And that is how you do that battery. You plug in the 60 watt bulb, fine. You're eating from that 1,200. Okay. There you go. You, you, you plug in your freezer, your freezer's consistently running at 60. Is it 60? I got a chart for you as well. 60 uh, um, watts, okay? You're eating into your 1,200. Okay? And that is the way you um, calculate it. Now, you're going to see, we spoke about the five components of a photovoltaic system. So each of those pieces must match, right? 
if you want to deliver 1,200 watts, well, you're going to have to have a battery that's going to be able to deliver that. You're going to have to have a power inverter that's going to be able to deliver that. And you're going to have to have a solar uh, panel that's going to be able to recharge that in a fast enough time that you're going to be able to use it again when you need it. Right? Here's where we go to, that's the sizing component. That's the sizing of a photovoltaic system. Okay? Temperature and discharge rate affect capacity, especially of lead acid batteries. Warmer batteries are capable of storing and delivering more charge than colder batteries. But we live in raggedy ass North America. So, <laughs> um, however, higher operating temperatures also decrease the useful life of a battery. Manufacturers generally rate lead acid batteries performance and cell life at 25 Celsius or 77 Fahrenheit for the best trade off between capacity and lifetime. Okay, so they're um, describing the optimal environmental factors, because again, just like you heard Kev say, what they said on the box, yeah, don't believe the hype. What they said on the box is the 100% optimal in their factory, in a test lab where people didn't fart. Look, nobody has ever broken wind in this place, right? And they performed this test and they said, this is what this battery or panel or array is capable of. Yes, they're right. It's capable of that. Are you going to be able to simulate the environment that they had in their factory? Not on your life. You're never going to get there. So you're never going to see the exact results that they're reporting. Not on any element that you buy. No, never. And in a practical sense, what that means is when you're sizing your photovoltaic system, you always have to go over. Yeah. If your calculations reveal, if you're going to run a power saw that's a thousand watts, well, it's in your best interest to get a fifteen hundred watt yeah. inverter. You don't want to run it to its peak because none of those electronic components actually operate at what's listed. So you always want to go over a little, a little more to ensure that whatever you're using will function. And you want to know what's interesting? And the, the example that he just gave you was amazing. You got a thousand watt draw on a power saw. You're going to want to get a 1500 watt inverter. But you know what? That power saw surge power is more than a thousand watts. It's more than 15. It's probably somewhere around 2000. But that 1500 watt power inverter will have a peak surge of about 2500. And it will cover it. You got to build over. If you build, if you site spec a photovoltaic system to the number, you're going to be sadly, sadly mistaken. You won't blow, blow it up. Yeah, you are. You're going to be sadly mistaken. You do not do it to the number. You build over. Build over. Don't try to cut costs on that. Any questions? How about, was that, did that clear it up a little bit? There was a question as it related to the amp hour to the watt hour. Everybody understand? What's the equation? Huh. Uh, amp hours times uh, voltage. Yeah. There it is. Somebody uh, just uh, There hour, it is. Amp hour times the voltage. Yep. Times the voltage to give you the watt hours. That's right. That's right. And you'll be able to take that information that that particular equation gives you, and you'll be able to understand how long you can operate a particular appliance based on the wattage that it uses. Mm. Mm -hmm. And our time of voltage. Mm. And listen to listen to the automotive man. So, and we're going to close it up with this tonight. We're going to close it up with this. But, so, interestingly All enough. Right, let's, let's, um, what's, let's do an equation again. Let's, um, let's um, go over that. Now, I said, give me an equation. Amp hour time void. You know, that sort of caught, caught my interest right there. Mm -hmm. So, so we're, okay. Yeah, now, I said, give me just, you know, just one, a light bulb, anything. 
I mean, you know. Uh, what do you, so what do you want? Um, how would you like to do that? So let's say you have 125 amp hour battery. How many watts do you have available? Uh, wait, no, let's go smaller than that. It's easier for you, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and something small and portable for everyone. Okay. How about you got a um, an 18 amp hour battery? An 18 amp hour battery. How much wattage can you provide? How much is your total wattage available? 18. 1800. A little high. I want to give it to you. <laughs> okay, 18, 18 what battery? 18 amp hour battery, you said? 18 amp hour battery. All right. All right, how many watt is... Uh, how many watt hours? What's the math? Give me the math on that. I probably wasn't paying attention to it. What's the math on that? That amp is hour. amp hours times voltage. Times voltage, okay. Times voltage. Now, so there's a there's a, there's an information missing. What was twelve volts? Uh, we got yeah, that was missing. You're right. On a twelve volt application. So it's it's eighteen times twelve then, right? That's what it is. And that's your answer. Then. That's it. So if eighteen is amp hours. It is always multiplied by that 12 volts or whatever voltage you're using. You could be using a 24 volt system, right? But in this case, we're talking about a 12 volt system. And in that regard, an amp hour, uh, the 18 amp hour times the 12 volt system comes to 216 watt hours. Mm, okay. So based on that, how long can you run a 60 watt amp. volt? Oh, okay, yeah, I got that. So how, based right, on that, good now, 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 no, take, no, no, take no, no, 218 no, no. amp hours, no, 218 watt hours, all right? Right. All right. How long can you run a 60 watt light bulb? Right. 60, 60 into 216, basically. Go ahead. Yeah. What is it? Well, I don't have my calculator. Oh, I got one. I got a phone. All right. <laughs> calculator. These kids. Ah, <laughs> we didn't have them. <laughs> Three hours. Oh, about, about three hours, yeah. We'll That's right. There. there you go. That's right. You can run a 60-watt light bulb for about three hours. Now, now when go you ahead. look at your battery, oh. depending on what appliance you run, now you oh. kind of figure out, well, what is the amp hour capacity that I'm looking for based on what I intend to run off of it? Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So. That gives you a little guideline there when you, we get into it down the road about sizing your system. Yes. But that I I felt the light bulb go off in the room. <laughs> I felt oh. it. Reggie, you got that, didn't you? I hope he did. Reggie got that. Everybody got that. Yeah, well, I got do, that. Yeah, do a couple more in your spare time. Do a couple more calculations. Um, Peter didn't give you a chart. Yet, I don't think. No, nope, not yet. General appliances and how many watts they use. But you can look on anything you got in your home. You, they usually have a plate that shows you what the uh, wattage is of, of that particular appliance. Now, say in my case, because my power goes out and I want to run a 400 watt television or entertainment system. So. I know that I need a particular size battery in order to run. Mm. An 18 amp hour battery is not going to run that for an extended period of time. Right. So, based on oh. the information you have, you start. To okay, I, I I I got that now. Now now the thing is, if you if you hook up your batteries, uh -huh. um, if you hook it up in a way where you have the same 12 volts, but then at the same time your current increased. You would have to hook it up where your voltage would increase in order to get more wattage. Am I correct? Yeah, I mean, talking about in series. In series, yes, he is. But don't go yes. too far ahead. Yeah, you going? Yeah, he is. Eighty. Yeah. He talk about running them in series. That's right. We That's were. good. It's good. I, I put. Um, we'll increase I mean, but out. I mean, you know, the current. It, it almost seems like the current don't really count. Just oh, the voltage no. counts to create no, the wattage. No. That's 
Now, I said that's what it seems like. Yeah. Like no, it only, it only, only the volts is counting this because it's amps times volts. Oh, we gonna get there. Yeah, you believe me? We get into Ohm's law. We'll get into that. Yeah, you, you we gonna get there. You, you, yeah, it counts. Yeah, it <laughs> um, I put a um, yes, Demonte. It was. I just neglected to add you, um, <laughs> but I will. Um, <laughs> Uh, I put a handout in the room. If everybody would go ahead and grab that. And uh, I made a post in the room also on terminology. So you can, you know, have that handy in case, you know, as we go on different terms that come up that you don't fully understand, at least you can have a, a small or, you know, a little reference to go back to. Okay. Has everybody grabbed that? Oh, that's what actually I wanted to give you. That was the load sheet as well. I'm going to give you the load sheet. So has everybody grabbed the um, the handout in the room? I'm going to put these all in the um, in the uh, group as well in the sunroom. Yes, we've been in the sunroom, Demonte. We just haven't had you in. It's been. <laughs> We can do a grown stuff, grown folks stuff up in there, man. You know, <laughs> we gonna get you in, brother. <laughs> so if everybody can grab those uh, those handouts, that'd be awesome. They'll be quick downloads. Let me know when you have them. <clears throat> yeah, can you also send that that um, link that you sent me before um, for that 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 ATC? Um, thing the from the very beginning. Ah, the Zoom I, disc. Yeah, because I had I had uh, I had to take my computer in and get it, you know, like fixed up and everything. So I'm I'm, I'm using a different computer now. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, he's gonna need magic. You're typing to me private, uh, Reggie. Um, in the in the chat. I'm sorry, no, not in the chat. In the um. In the WebEx meeting itself, there should be um, files for you to be able to click on and download. They are uh, there for transfer. You see those? I got all three of those files, but I don't. I don't have that link. That ATC yep. link. Yep. I'm gonna get you that one. We'll. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the room. You're in the yeah. room, aren't you? In yeah, the sun I'm room? in the sun room. Yeah. I'm okay. There. Okay. Reggie, you get the downloads. Uh, I'm, I'm in the sun room on my phone, but I don't see any. Um, oh, no, no. It's in the chat room. I'm sorry. It's in the chat room in the web app. That's all right. I'll put the three of them into the sun room. Okay. All right. Any questions about what we've covered? Oh, let me give you some reading work. Let me give you some. <laughs> Ain't nobody scared here. <laughs> Let me get you into some reading on your own. Okay, so I gave you a um, a basic PV guide and install book. It doesn't really have a very good chapter on battery. It does not really. I have a good chapter on batteries. You know what? It's all right. That's all right. You know what you do? We're going to have you start from chapter one on here. This is, again, this is not going to um, overwhelm you. Uh, it is not going to overwhelm you. It is a basic step-by-step, -step, okay? What we're going to do each time we come into this class is we're going to take another piece of this and we're going to tie this puzzle together. By the time we get to the end, this is going to be a complete picture for you. So I want you to start at, at section one in that PV installation guide. Introduction. Okay. And you can most likely, uh, we're going to meet again on Thursday. 
Um, go, go to 2.2. Start at the introduction and finish at 2.2. It's only three pages, two pages. Three pages. Read those. Okay, and on Thursday night, we're going to go forward. Um, and Thursday's module, we'll finish up on the battery. There's some other things and terminology that you need to know in relation to the battery. So we'll finish up the battery on Wednesday, on Thursday night. Don't have me calling out days because I'm be I'm about to go into another train and I'll just call out random days. Um, everybody should have um, the meeting uh, invite and that meeting invite, if you're using Outlook, you can click on the meeting invite and it will add it to your calendar. So, and it is scheduled perpetually for all of our classes for Tuesday and Thursday. And then I sent another one out for Sunday. Okay, so everybody verify that you have those and keep those close. The Tuesday and Thursday are always going to be the same link. The Sunday is its own link, but it will always be the same. Okay. Mm. Um, the um, the meeting advice, meeting invite, you just basically mean when we meet basically throughout the week. That's basically it, right? Yes. But so in your email, you got something from WebEx from this, this yeah. hosting solution. And in that, um, it, that has the link for you to be able to get into this class. Generally, I'm going to go into the sun room before class starts, and I'll paste the link up there anyway. You know what I'm saying? But it just in case, if you want to, in your email, you have a link to the, uh, to the room at all times. OK. Um, the 2.2, the, the that's, that's that ATC link thing? Is, is, is that what that 2.2 reading is about? No, 2.2 like is mounting. That's the balance of systems. Ban well, which, well, which book is that? is that? Is that one of the three books you just gave us, or is that that electronic book that yes, you gave it's us? The, it's the very first one. Oh, you might not have been in the room. You may not have been in the room. It is a, uh, a guide. It is a basic um, photovoltaics is what I named it. It's a guide to photovoltaic oh, systems. Yeah. Yep. I see it. I see it. Yep. Okay. I, I wasn't sure which, which book that was yeah. coming from. Yeah, this I, I is a good that. one. Yeah, read through, read uh, up to page five. You don't, uh, again, don't go into the mounting yet. We'll get into the mounting. That's really one of the last things that we're going to touch on is the, the, the balancing of systems. Mm. Okay. Right? And we're going to get together Thursday, finish up the batteries and move forward. Uh, could, could you please uh, put that book in, uh, into the sunroom as well, please? Absolutely. I'm going to put all three of them in there. Okay. Great. I have a question. Yes. Are we not using the photovoltaic systems book? That We're was... not going to use the book. We're, we'll use it loosely. Okay. And we're going to use it as reference. But what we found was they overly convoluted things. Mm -hmm. They made things so incredibly difficult. Me and Kev spent time, you know, in class, just me and him talk about, now, wait a minute. <laughs> if this means that, look, yeah. So they made things an awful lot uh, more convoluted than it, than it actually needed to be. And once we got to the place where we was like, oh, okay, now it can be explained a lot easier. Great. That makes sense. Yeah, a lot easier because it was crazy the way that they were trying to make you understand. You know, the thing is, and this is true when I went to school, I learned a different way. Um, just because you write it down on paper doesn't mean I'm going to take it that way. I <laughs> learned a different way. And so this is a one, they do a one size fits all. Everybody is a geek. You know what I'm saying? And, and furthermore, this book assumes so by the time you're going for the NABCEP test, this book assumes you've already done three jobs with a master installer. It assumes you're an electrician and no electrician's terminology. It, it makes a bunch of assumptions that, yeah, frankly, we couldn't. When we went through it the first time, people's eyes glazed over. They were like, what? <laughs> yeah. So we're going to avoid that glaze. Well, that's good to know. Thank you. <laughs> yes, certainly. Welcome, Queen. It is a good book. I refer to it. Um, and I will use excerpts out of it. 
to explain some of these things, but no, we're not going to go through this scoop to nuts like we did. That was crazy. <laughs> All right. Um, add us to. Oh, you, Demonte, you're talking about add you to the room? All right, we're going to finish up all the grown stuff, grown folks stuff. We'll get you in there. <laughs> all right. My beloved, we will get together on Thursday. I will put the recording in the room. Um, don't share that with anybody. Um, and I will put the material in the room as well. And we'll get together on Thursday night. Mm. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely, my beloved. Thank you. Indeed. Kevin. You. Yes, sir, brother. Good to, good to do it again. Yes, it is. Peace, oh. everybody. All right. Hey, um, Mr. Uh, 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 Peter. Mr. Peter. Yes, sir. Have you taken that test already, that whatever certifiable, what, I mean, I don't, I don't, it don't really matter. I'm just asking. N-A-B-C-E-P? I won't. Yeah. I never will. <laughs> I never will. It's, you know what that is to me, man? Again. Oh, you you wasn't in the, um you weren't in the kickoff. Yeah, I was Just, in the kickoff. Oh, you were yeah, yeah, man. To me, that is a continuation of the unions. So the unions in America started to keep the jobs from my father, right? The union started to restrict the jobs from my father and from his father. Well, the NABCEP test is exactly that. It says in order to even take the test, to even qualify to be able to take the test, you have to have deployed three photo, three static photovoltaic jobs under a master um, installer. So what does that mean? That means, first of all, the master installers in your area don't look nothing like you. Mm-hmm. And if they're going to take anybody under our apprenticeship, are they going to take you? Possibly not. Right. So what that means is they have the ability to, again, maintain and create this monopoly. Okay. What what happens? What happened? Like let's say let's say if I want to put in somebody's house, is there is there I'm sure there's a way to work around the system where I put in a house and it'd be a business that I do and I won't get handled because I'm not abiding by their rules. Does that make you, sense? Yes, it does. And if you read the chapters that I just assigned this evening, you'll see that exactly. It's called a um a standalone system. So the system whereby they get into your business is called a grid tie. That means you're tying into the grid. But a standalone system, which is what it is that we're describing, what we're building here in this class, is not connected to the grid. I ain't got to tell you where I am at all. It's my power. So I can build that same standalone system for somebody else, and they can't say nothing about it. Can't say nothing about it. It's not tied to their grid, so nope. I, won't, I won't get in trouble by no master or any municipalities or whatever. Nope. Nope. You on your land. You're on your land. You're doing your thing. Shit, I got lights, man. That's what it is. <laughs> don't get mad because I got an Xbox out here. You know, no, no. <laughs> wait, but, wait a minute. I'm not, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about if I were to do it for somebody else. Yeah, like, you can do it for as a, as a business. Uh, so what you want to do, what you uh, – Okay. Uh, here's the problem. In city limits, mm-hmm. you also need to fire up, uh, follow fire codes. So if there was a fire in the building, the firemen need to have a standard as it relates to electrical boxes and electrical junctions. They need to know where power is, right? Oh, okay, yes. So what you have to do is you have to label your systems. You have to make sure that those systems are clearly labeled. What kind of voltage is that in there? Where is the termination switch, Mm -hmm. right? These kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But if you do, if you take care of that safety, you ain't got no problem. What can it do? You can't do what? (laughs) Okay. Got you. Oh, man, yeah, you're going to have a lot of fun with this here, brother. (laughs) You're going to love this. I definitely appreciate you, Miss Peter. You have a you have a great day once again. I'll, I'll be looking for that link in the sunroom. Yes, in about sir. Ten, about ten minutes. Yes, sir. It'll be up there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my beloved. Okay. When we get together Thursday.